In this video, I will walk you through this optimization problem. A rectangle is to contain 24 square inches of print. The margins at the top and bottom are to be 1.5 inches. The margins on the left and right are to be 1 inch. What should the dimensions of the page be so that the least amount of paper is used? So I am working on this sketch. So you can see the margins that I have drawn that are still in white. The yellow area represents where the text is to be. That is supposed to be 24 square inches of print. So that's the yellow here will be 24 square inches. I'm making up a couple of variables. So the bottom of the yellow rectangle, I'm calling that X. And then the height of the yellow rectangle, I am calling that Y. So what else can I squeeze into this picture? They told me that uh, the margins at the top and bottom are 1.5 inches. So that means at the top here, this is to be 1.5 inches. And uh, so that's, that's this distance, like right here. And that's the same at the bottom, so just keep that in mind. And then on the left and right, the margins are one inch. All right, so I've got one inch right here. Okay, and that is the same on the left and the right. So we are going to need an expression for the dimensions of the actual paper that involve X and Y. So for example, what about this vertical dimension right here? What would this be? Well, you see the Y that's already there. So most of this is Y. But then we have an extra 1.5 inches at the top and bottom. Uh, 1.5 plus 1.5 is 3. So this total height of the paper will be Y plus 3. Similarly, we can come up with an expression for the width of the paper. So most of the width is X, but we have an extra one inch on the left and the right for a total of two. Okay, so the width of the paper is X plus two and the height of the paper is Y plus three. Ultimately, we will have a primary equation and a secondary equation. The primary equation will be the value that we are trying to maximize. In this case, we are asked, what should the dimensions of the page be so that the least amount of paper is used? So we are talking about the area of the paper, and we want the least amount. So obviously, we are trying to minimize. We are trying to minimize the area of the paper. So we are going to need an expression for area. And uh, we know that it, the area of a rectangle is length times width or base times height. So in this case, that will be x plus 2 times y plus 3. But we need a, an expression that only has one variable, not two. So that's why we need a secondary equation so that we can make some type of a substitution. The secondary equation will come from this sentence right here. The rectangle is to contain 24 square inches of print. So this rectangle must have an area of 24 square inches. We know that the area of the rectangle will be x times y. So this tells us that x times y must equal 24, and there is our secondary equation. Let's get y by itself so that we can have something to substitute into the primary equation. Dividing both sides by x, we have y is equal to 24 over x. So let's do that substitution and modify the primary equation. So we will have x plus 2, and then 24 over x plus 3. I will rewrite the 24 over x 
as 24 times x to the negative 1 power to make it a little bit easier to differentiate in a moment. So we are to minimize this area, but we know that a minimum will only occur at a critical value. So we need to find the derivative of this and then use that uh, a prime to find the critical value. So let's differentiate. Let's take the derivative. We need to do the product rule, obviously, because we have uh, a function of x times a function of x. So the way I like to do it, I take the derivative of the first factor and I leave the second factor alone. So the derivative of x plus 2 is 1. And I leave the second factor alone. So I have 24x to the negative 1 power plus 3. And then I put a plus and I go through it again. The second time through, I leave the first factor alone. So I leave the x plus 2 alone. And now I take the derivative of the second factor. So when I take the derivative of 24x to the negative 1 power, I'm going to do the power rule. The negative 1 multiplies by the 24, so I have negative 24. I reduce this exponent by 1, so that's negative 24x to the negative 2 power. And then the derivative of 3 is 0. So that's my product rule. As I simplify, so far I just brought down the 24x to the negative 1 power plus 3 and I disregarded the 1. I am going to do the distributive property right here with this monomial. So negative 24x to the negative 2 power times x, I'm going to have the minus 24. When you multiply with like bases, you add the exponents. So this is 1 plus negative 2. So that's going to be x to the negative 1 power. And then I multiply 2 times negative 24x to the negative 2 power. So that will be negative 48x to the negative 2 power. I notice that these like terms cancel each other out. So I have a prime is equal to 3 minus 48x to the negative 2 power. So I'm going to rewrite that a bit as 3 minus 48 over x squared. I can work with this. So next we need to ask ourselves, where will a prime equal 0? And ultimately we will ask where a prime is undefined because uh, those will be our critical values. So let's set a prime equal to 0 first. So that will give us 3 minus 48 over x squared is equal to 0. Adding 48 over x squared to both sides, we get 3 is equal to 48 over x squared. Multiplying both sides by, by x squared, we get 3x squared is equal to 48. Dividing both sides by 3, we get x squared is equal to 16. Taking the square root of both sides, we get x is equal to, I want to say plus or minus 4. However, x represents the, uh, the width of a rectangle. So that can't be negative. So I'm just going to write x is equal to 4. So this is one critical value that we have so far. Let us also ask ourselves where a prime is undefined. Well, I see this x squared in the denominator. So if x were equal to 0, that's what would cause this uh, a prime to be undefined. However, I'm going to disregard this value of x equals 0 because, again, x is the width of this rectangle of text. And if x is 0, then we will have no area at all. So that's, that doesn't make any sense. This rectangle has to contain 24 square inches. It can't be zero. 
That means x equals 4 is our only critical value. Therefore, x equals 4 will be the answer. At least it will be the x dimension. We still need to find the y dimension. And uh, we can find it using the secondary equation. So we know that y is equal to 24 over x. Since we just found that x is 4, then y will be 24 over 4. In other words, y will equal 6. But let's be careful. Remember that x and y are the dimensions of this yellow rectangle. x and y are not the dimensions of the whole page. So if I want to find the dimensions of the whole page, I'm going to have to do x plus 2 and y plus 3. So uh, x plus 2 is going to be 4 plus 2. So that is 6. And y plus 3 means 6 plus 3. So that is 9. So these are actually the dimensions of the paper. The dimensions of the page that minimize the area are a width of 6 inches and a height of 9 inches.